All right, back again. Another rapid fire video. Surprising. Oh my gosh, we're out of control here. Um, yeah, so uh, I found a couple small bugs, kind of corner case things uh, in my testing along the way here. Uh, and I figured I'd just throw them all into a video, kind of stitch everything together. Um, and then, you know, the Immersions IRC folks can check it out, see if they want to fix them or not. Uh, most of them are pretty minor, but uh, yeah, let's get rocking and rolling. So let's uh, start by talking about the setup as we always tend to do here. Um, similar setup to what we were doing for the RSSI uh, video, the previous one, part three. Uh, Fox rear fail core going into the signal generator, into a power divider, variable attenuator, into the rapid fire module, and we're monitoring the received channels, the oscilloscope probes, so we uh, line lock the um, oscilloscope to the output of the camera, and then look at the different received paths uh, from the rapid fire module. So let's see what that looks like. So there's the fail core up here, goes into the SIG gen, this reference power level of minus 50 dBm when these variable attenuators report zero. Minus 50 dBm will be here at the reference plane on the front of the rapid fire module. So the signal comes down, gets split, goes into the variable attenuator, comes up in the rapid fire module. We've got the three video signals broken out here and one of them is displayed, you know, the combined rapid fire is displayed on the uh, monitor back there. And, you know, there's the oscilloscope up there. So same setup we've kind of done for everything in this series, minus that it's not in the Fat Shark goggles, just because it's a little easier for me to work with it out here on the bench. So, all right, let's see if we can reproduce this first problem. Um, it's been happening pretty consistently for me. And again, this first one in particular might just be my module, um, but before I get ahead of myself, well, let's see if we can get it working. So this uh, first bug is a power on bug. Um, so right now the rapid fire module is off. Um, I have my signal generator outputting minus 50 dBm. Nice and strong signal. The variable attenuators are at zero, so that means minus 50 dBm is actually going into the rapid fire module. Um, and you can also see the current attenuation on this Windows view here. So let me show you that. So I can click here and I can increase it and you'll see it change there. So it looks like there's a little bit of a delay on my web stream for this guy. So I'll try to do things slowly. So. All right, and then of course up here in the oscilloscope, we've got the video signal from the Falcor, rapid fire, upper receive module output, lower receive module output, and then the combined output there. Um, and I also, from the previous test, I still have the, the digital line showing um, that one will be high if the upper module is selected and low if the lower module one is selected. I apologize if the scaling's a little bit off on the oscilloscope. I uh, turned this off last night and I forgot what state I left it in, but hopefully everything's all right. So yeah, let's turn on the power supply and see what we get. All right. So we're gonna actually start attenuating the first channel and you can see it right there. All I've done is change the attenuation on the first path and it loses the signal. I can do the same thing on the second path. I can go all the way down, down the sensitivity and you'll see that blue trace getting fuzzy on the oscilloscope.
The good news is when he's in this mode, looks like we got some crosstalk there. There's no way that should work that well. Um, sorry, looks like I'm getting ahead of myself. He was doing the legacy toggling between the two modes. So the signal going into that first antenna input is really strong. So it's minus 56 dBm. Um, but you can see that the looks like the AGC is not being initialized uh, properly the first time the rapid fire module is powered on. Um, I will say one thing, though. I only see this if I've let things sit for you know, a long time, not like a minute or two. Like it's almost always when I come back in the morning and I power things on, this particular uh, thing happens. Um, let's change the frequency. Actually, let's go into the menus and show you guys what uh, what we got set here. So I'm still using the official release firmware. I'll show you that. One, two, six. All right. I don't know if you guys saw it in there. I'm in rapid fire mode one using both antennas. <clears throat> I just have it in RSSI display mode just because that was where it was at last. All right. So let's change frequency and see if it fixes itself. So we'll let it drop back out. So 5880. And we got to change our attenuation. So I'm moving the, or changing the upper attenuation. And you can see it's still doing it. Let's, uh, let's change bands. See if that was it. 5860. Nope. Yeah, we can already see it's doing its thing. Let's remove the RF signal totally <clears throat> and restore it. So, still not happy. Actually, one thing I forgot to show you. Let's see if we can actually get it to do a rapid fire sync on this. So you can see he'll still sync up. Let it do its full dropout. All right. We'll bring the signal back. And we'll start attenuating that first path again. And there it is. So essentially what this does is it makes your rapid fire not work very well in diversity mode the very first time you power it on. Um, this may be just a fluke with the my particular module. This is a batch one module. I sent it back to them to do that capacitor mod, but that's the only thing that's um, unique about it is it's an original batch one so there may be some kind of race condition when they're writing the registers in that upper RTC 6715 uh, receiver chip um, maybe something else going on but it is notable so if you guys when you you know first flight of the day if your rapid fire performance is kind of crappy uh, unplug and plug your uh, goggle power um, just to make sure this doesn't happen to you all right on to the next one Oh, actually, before we go on to the next one, let me show you that it, if I power cycle, it fixes itself. So let's go back to where we started. Is that like using the same setup where we started? Oh, helps if you hit the right button. Uh, I'm running out of coffee here. There we go. All right, so make sure we still have the problem. There it is. Again, we're looking at that green trace, the video output from the upper module. We're going to power the rapid fire off, and then power it back on. 
All right, and you can see you got the rapid fire sync on the screen. And all we'll do is we'll change that attenuation on the first path. And I got to change it in the right window, right? So all the way down to sensitivity. And it's happy as a clam. So we'll leave that up strong. We'll do the second path all the way down to sensitivity. You can see we had some crossover. The isolation's not the greatest um, with the setup here. So you can see when the attenuation is at zero here with this much attenuation clicked in, there's still leakage between the two channels. Um, but that's okay. But works as expected. All right, on to the next one. So this particular bug is a, a really minor one. I want to get say that right here in the beginning before we get any further. Um, and it was actually brought up to me by one of our Eagle Eye viewers on one of the previous videos. Let me see if I can get his, uh, his comment up. Give me just a second. So here it is, our, uh, our Eagle Eye viewer, George Yu. I apologize if I pronounced your name wrong. I know my name's freaking hard to pronounce too. That's why we're sticking to PK. Um, said, interestingly, oh, let's see if I can get the mouse pointer to show up. Uh, interestingly, a lot of the times the odd even fields are swapped. I guess the goggle resolution is too low to see the bug of the field swapping. So the particular set of cases to get this to happen um, are related to the sensitivity of the module and then kind of going in and out of mode one rapid fire lock where it's generating the pulse sinks. So let's uh, let's switch over and I've actually already have it reproduced. I'm going to show you guys that right now. There we go. So this is it in a bad state. So we've got our input camera, receiver one, receiver two, output from the rapid fire. And you can see that the vertical blank is offset in the rapid fire uh, output and the signal strength again if you look at the attenuators um, and the value up here is strong so i was at a weak signal so essentially what the the setup to get this to happen is the attenuation on the first channel or the upper antenna puts it into sensitivity and then the lower antenna moves into and out of sensitivity. So it's kind of simulating that you're flying long range and your omni antenna on the top, if you're flying a high gain in an omni, the omni on top doesn't hear anything. And the high gain antenna on the bottom is kind of coming and going. Um, let's say you, you turn your head the wrong way. You're like, oh, I'm flying this way. And then all of a sudden it's like, no, I'm in static. Oh, turn around and or maybe you, you ducked your head down because that always seems to happen to us right um and then so you got in the static oh got to bring my head up there it comes it comes back um so that's the particular set of settings that we're going to try to replicate here and the way we're going to do it is uh, we're going to fix one of the attenuations um to a nice weak level so that's very much in the noise you can kind of see that upper trace and then the second one, we're going to go over to this GUI um, indefinite handover window. See my mouse cursor there. And we're going to simulate a fade from 35 dB to 60 dB of attenuation on the second path. So again, that's in addition to the, this minus 50 dBm. So um, that means the signal from minus 85 to... Uh, minus 110. So it, it's going to be coming and going in and out of static. And we know the sensitivity with this particular setup is around minus 98, 99 dBm. So we will be well into the static. Um, uh, again, this is running 126 release of rapid fire firmer. So it's going to try to hold on to that rapid fire lock for quite a bit longer. Um, and when the signal comes back, it won't be super strong so there's going to be some noise for it when it's trying to reacquire the rapid fire signal so let's do uh first things first actually let's 
bring up the signal strength on both channels. And we're going to kill the signal so he loses a rapid fire lock. Give it the full amount of time. All right, bring it back. We can see everybody's lined up and happy, right? Boop. Good to go. So let's tell you it's the first guy. And then we're going to start our, uh, our fade on the second one. And you can kind of keep an eye on what's going on over here in the monitor. And he's still got good rapid fire sync. It usually takes quite a few cycles as it's going in and out. Oh, there it is. So now you can see that he shifted over. If you look at the, and now he lost lock again. So this particular case is kind of a, a tough corner case because of, you know, he's trying to reacquire lock at a very weak signal. Um, and so how where he's making that determination is kind of a challenge. And again, he's only using one antenna, so this is not totally fair, um, but it is a real world setup that we do fly with one Omni and one high gain. So it definitely makes it harder for for it to make do that mode one magic. So, all right, let's see if we uh, have any more. All right, for this bug, um, actually all I'm gonna do is enter and leave the OSD menus. Um, I haven't found a particular way to consistently reproduce this. It always just kind of seems to happen when I least expect it. And there's kind of two failure modes almost, I'm, I think. I'm not 100% sure because it's it's only happened like three times um, in the, I want to say the four or five days I've been messing with this module, putting it through its paces. Um, and essentially what it is, is you'll go into the OSD to manipulate something and either the on-screen display is all black um, or like the, the, basically the UI seems to freeze up. I can't tell if it's something with the uh, diversity slash OSD uh, chip on the bottom that's doing all the magic stuff or if it's something with the the guy on the top that's driving the OLED and tuning the receivers. Um, I think that's how this uh, module is wired uh, inside, but not 100% sure. I'm, that's a bit of conjecture. Um, so yeah, let's kind of poke around. I'll most likely chop out most of this stuff um, and only put in the part where it actually happens. But So all I'll be doing is entering and leaving the OSD menu. Let's see if I can do it left-handed so you guys can see the, the monitor. wonder if we lost rapid fire lock there. Let's see. It's not doing the overlay. So maybe this is a different bug here. Not 100% sure. Let's see, race band 8. Rapid fire mode 1. Yeah, I think we just did it. So we lost all uh, signal or something like that, right? So let's see. It's like whenever I, oh, no, maybe not. Weird. And it came back to rapid fire. All right, that was strange. <laughs> I don't think I've seen it do that particular sequence events before, um, but it definitely wasn't didn't have rapid fire lock because um, it went to full static right away, and it was in mode one. 
Uh, so there's something strange there. All right, let's, let's keep messing around. Okay, I wonder if this is the same scenario. So we switched from channel 7 to channel 8. <clears throat> We've got a strong signal, but no rapid fire lock. So we're gonna, I'm gonna attenuate each one of the paths. So it looks like he's going with channel 2 there. I wanna see if he's just sticking with one channel all the time, or if he's in like mode 2. Yeah, it looks like he's in legacy diversity mode. And you can kind of tell that because of the size of the switching pulses. In rapid fire mode, um, mode 2 or mode 1, when he's switching back and forth between the two antennas, the switch rate is actually a lot faster. Um, and you can kind of see the cross over there. Let's actually bring this back over to where we know the mode one crossover is. So in this case we can, oh, I guess he's in mode one. I just, sorry about that. I was, uh, I'm sorry, not mode one, mode two. I was too weak on the, the second attenuator here because that's like the minus 88 dBm number is kind of where that crossover is, where he'll stay in mode two and always average the two signals together even if the signal on antenna one is way stronger and we kind of covered that in one of the previous videos um, so interesting we don't have rapid fire lock and I'll turn the signal strengths up on both of these guys so a nice clean signal no rapid fire lock um, and I can take them down to sensitivity you can see it's not regenerating the mode one pulses. We'll leave him here for a couple seconds. Make sure he does a full timeout and see if he actually comes back. Nagatory. Alright, let's do it one more time for good luck, right? And we'll change frequencies again and see if uh, he can get back into rapid fire mode. So I, I feel like I've seen this in the field um, where I'm switching channels and it doesn't come back and do a rapid fire lock. And again, this whole time, the Falcor, the Foxier camera that's generating the video signal into the modulator, I haven't power cycled, it's been running continuous. So it's, you know, it's, it's obviously been, you can see it on the scope there, the yellow trace, it's been running continuous. So, yep, no rapid fire sync. All right, let's switch channels and see if it gets its button gear. Hmm. Nope. All right, we'll do a power cycle. There he is, and he's back. So, I think that's kind of what I was trying to reproduce. There was another one where it just goes black screen. Um, when switching, like this screen, it won't show up. Instead of doing an on-screen display, it's just a whole lot of black stuff. 